Well, good afternoon. Well, actually, what I want to say is aloha. And I can say that because I, my husband and I just returned from the beautiful aloha state of Hawaii. And so I'm kind of in that Hawaii state of mind. So I thought I'd give you, to start out, I'd give you a couple of Hawaiian words. They're, they're applicable to the subject today, but I thought this might put you in my state of mind. And the first word in my um, Texas Hawaiian accent is aia keola a kehana. And what that means is there is life in work. Work produces what is needed. And that falls under another Hawaiian word, which is kuleana, which is one's personal sense of responsibility. And with that comes motivation and a healthy society. So, like I said, I think that's appropriate for today's topic and focus of discussion, which is workforce development, economic development, and job training. Each of you on the panel, and I know everyone in this room, understands how critical a competitive and a well-trained workforce is, not only to attracting and retaining businesses, but also for the health and vitality of our citizens. So the, the, the idea for today's topic actually came partially from the release of the J.P. Morgan Chase New Skills at Work Study. This J.P. Morgan study is their five-year, 250 million workforce readiness initiative to close the skills gap. The study looks specifically at the middle skills job gap across the nation and focuses specifically on numbers in the DFW area. There should be copies of that at your table and we would encourage you to look at the study. It will be well worth your read. So, meanwhile, back to the business at hand. You didn't come to hear me, you heard, came to hear these esteemed mayors. So, Mayors, let's break the ice, and let's start with Mayor Trevino, and I'll ask you in 60 seconds, will each of you tell us, what is the favorite thing about being mayor of your city? Well, the, the favorite thing for myself is, is not just economic development, it's not uh, everything going on in our city and talking to our citizens, but it's the cooperation that we have between the cities. We live in a huge region and we can't individually be successful without working with other cities. Well, we've got recently the, uh, the completion of North Karen Express through NRH with the help of Fort Worth and all the cities along that corridor. Uh, we just this week signed an agreement with the T to get TexRail going with two stations in North Richmond Hills, which is huge. You don't get any of that done without cooperating with the other cities. Uh, Mayor Tate and, and Grapevine and, and Betsy and Fort Worth helped us tremendously with those efforts. So I think the best thing you can see is the growth and so much excitement and, and, and vitality, but it's because of the cooperation between the cities. Mayor Ronnie? <coughs> yeah, I, I love the growth. I mean, that's, that's a fabulous thing about being mayor, but I think the best thing about being mayor is is being somebody that is important for these like eight-year-olds. I mean, you know, these little kids, I mean, you're with kids and they think that you're like, you know, the king of England or something. <laughs> um, and it's, it's marvelous to, to interact. So I don't know, I, I guess I should be a school teacher or something, but, but that's, that's where I get the biggest high. I love it. I sat with them one time and they were asking a question. And they just were asking me, so oh, being mayor, and they said, and how much do you make as being mayor, okay? And I decided to answer honestly to all questions. I said, $60,000 a year, and they went, oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> they just, that was like, and you could be rich too, you know? <laughs> and it, it was just great to be with them. So uh, that's what I enjoy. Yeah, we definitely don't do it for the money. And by the way, you get paid five times as much as I get paid. <laughs> so what do I like about being mayor? I would say you actually get things done. I mean, you look at all the other segments of government, 
And I love being mayor because you can work with a small enough group of people, and let's face it, we do have tax dollars. I mean, none of our cities are really losing residents or losing businesses. I mean, we are constantly in this growth factor, but it's wonderful that you have the resources and the people behind you that are constantly pushing for change. And if you want a project done, if you work for it, you can see, and it will happen before three more elections you know, that you could, oh, 20 years ago we had that idea. And I think a lot of times uh, elected officials get a bad rap because it does take so long. But for a mayor, I don't know that you have any other government position where you have as much influence on your district. I'll have to agree with all that you've said, but, and welcome all four of you to Fort Worth. We're delighted to have you with us. And I don't think anybody in this audience will be surprised at my answer. It's the people. I absolutely love the people. The people just kind of energize me and the chance to have a tremendous bully pulpit to put your message out, to get the city's message out, to get the region's message out. And you're right, Mike, the kids, they're part of the people, but the kids just think, the mayor's the coolest thing, and what they think the most is, I'll speak to them or go read to them, and they'll go, Mayor, do you have a bodyguard? <laughs> and when you go, yes, they forget all about the mayor and want to talk to your bodyguard. So. <laughs> but truly, we have the best people in Fort Worth and the best people in our region, and working with all of you is amazing. I love the fact that I can pick up the phone in four years and call anyone in this city, and I've yet to have anyone say no. And I think that's a tremendous thing. They sometimes go, have you lost your mind, Betsy? But they always say yes. So thank you all. It really is the people because I really am a people person. And that's news to all of you, right? Mayor Brady. Well, Mayor Price, we have a lot in common. I, too, have really enjoyed working with the people, at least most of them anyway. We all know that there are those exceptions. But... It is energizing, isn't it, when you're out there working with the people. And this morning, I had the privilege of starting my day at Mission Arlington. I was asked to come and welcome and say thank you to 400 volunteers that were there helping families in need. And that is inspirational when you're a part of that. And, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our General Motors employees. I think you also embody that can-do spirit of Arlington. You know, uh, this, this week we had a great announcement there of a $1.4 billion expansion. But the thing that we've got to look back, and I love what Bob said, retrace the history. Well, back in 1991, General Motors was looking at closing the Arlington plant. Well, the can-do spirit of the Arlington people rose up and said, Detroit, don't do that. But the workers at General Motors said, look, we can do more. We can work harder. We can work smarter. And Detroit believed them, and now that has evolved into the top plant in General Motors and, of course, now have been awarded an expansion that will ensure generations for them. You know, th right now we have grandparents and parents and kids all working there, and yet that can-do spirit back in 1991 opened up the door now for opportunity that we have. So, yes... It was very energizing uh, there Tuesday to see those workers and, and the excitement there. And, of course, all over the city, it's a buzz there with the momentum. And it is energizing, isn't it, Mayor Price? And it's awesome to be able to work and be a facilitator and to be a part of it. It is truly a blessing to be a mayor. That is fabulous. All right, moving into more specifics of our discussions today. I'm going, I want each of you to have the opportunity in the discussion, but I'm going to direct each question to one of you and the rest of you join in, all right? So this first one's going to be directed to Mayor Price. So give us your opinions on the importance of a well-trained and educated workforce for the growth and sustainability of our city. And what concerns have you heard from employers about the availability of the workforce? You know, it's a no-brainer when you're talking to business people or anybody in the community or elected officials that you can't grow and you can't even maintain the growth you have if you don't have a strong workforce. The Chamber will tell you that one of the first things that businesses that are looking at your community either to grow or to expand, one of the first things they will ask you is, 
tell us about your education opportunities and tell us about your workforce and what skills they have. You've got the new skills at work, the J.P. Morgan report in front of you. I would encourage you to read that. Mayor Rawlings and I had the chance to be there for the kickoff. They talk about 40,000 job openings that are out there now at mid-level skills. We simply have to think as business and community leaders, where are those skills? And we have to get to the schools and say, you need to be turning people out who can do X, Y, and Z. Get the skills that are needed. And unfortunately, Victor Boschini is looking at me, but not all our kids are going to college. All, a lot of them need to get a technical job. They need the opportunity. Or maybe they'll go to college later. Maybe they'll get a job where they can enter. And we need to work hard on that. We have to remove the barriers. The business community tells us that there's a significant gap in what the kids are coming out learning and what they really need. And I would encourage you as business leaders to get in the schools and get engaged and let them know what it is, to get engaged at the state level and tell them what we need in our workforce. Well, I think we all realize that it's important to have a career path that leads you right into a job, not just an occupation. And as a business owner, I have seen that being so important that we not just train for a general occupation, but it also is so important that we start that training early, that we start talking to our kids when they're in elementary school about the occupation that they need and, and to think about the training. Even though they may change their mind along that path, it gives them a goal and something to work for. I've been very impressed uh, there over the years of how our chamber has worked to get the information from our business community to our educational institutions and also our workforce development institutions and even the work of Workforce Solutions in Tarrant County, which really takes an initiative in making that happen. That forward thinking makes such a difference because then we know what is coming. Businesses have to communicate. And of course, many times it takes a lot of work, doesn't it, Judy, going and grabbing them and saying, hey, I need to know, what, are they, what do you need uh, here in this? And now with, the, with technology evolving, it's even more important because paradigms change. You know, occupations change. Uh, the, the career path needs to change. And, I'm very impressed, too, with the way our universities and our colleges adapt so much quicker than they used to to the changing job market. But uh, it is in critical. And then just uh, to give you an example, here we're going to be having 600 new jobs at General Motors here through this expansion. It's critical that they have the technical training, that mid-level, mid-skill level training that Chase was talking about in the J.P. Morgan Chase study there with it. And of course, that career path to mid-skill level jobs is great pain, too. It's no longer uh, there's something looked down on. And it also gives hope to those who may not have even been going through high school to be able to have a career path that, that pushes them on through high school and, and getting their associate degree to move in to the job that we need right there, perhaps in manufacturing or healthcare or someone else. But thank you. I'd like to add one thing. In, in Tarrant County, we're extremely fortunate. Um, and I know Dallas County has uh, the same thing going on. But TCC, uh, Tarrant County College is unbelievable uh, for retraining, for what Jeff was talking about, for those people that are changing their career path. We have such a great tool with Tarrant County Community College, even kids coming out of high school that don't want to go to the TCU or to UNT or UTA. They can start there and then move over. But we have such a, a valuable tool there and resource. And I think a lot of our ISDs are utilizing TCC to get those kids uh, moving in the right direction. Yeah, I, uh, well, I think it is, um, it's existential in nature almost, this issue we've got. Uh, fortunately, uh, the DFW area has been driven by business people. I mean, people like Bob and others that have, have, have put their whole life in this thing and grown it. And we, so we know how to do business. But we are not doing a good job of providing that workforce. There, the question was, do you talk to people and do they say they got mm -hmm. issues? And the answer is yes. We are the biggest technology employer in the state of Texas, all right? 
not Austin, not Houston. People cannot find great employees. Now the word is gonna start to get out and those people are gonna stop coming and stop moving here. And we have not figured out how the business and what I'm gonna call education, and I don't mean that just book learning, you know, gets together and fits those needs. And so it's a, it's a really, it may be the most critical issue that the state of Texas faces. Probably the biggest challenge we're all facing, everybody yeah. in this room and all of us up here. Yeah. I think it's a gr very good point. I, I was going to say technology as well, because every company, pretty much, if you uh, if you ask them what kind of company are you, you know, you get manufacturing or logistics. Well, at the end of the day, pretty much every company is a tech company, because the software that you're using, the applications that you're using, the solutions all need to work together. And we do not have the workforce out there to provide for all of those. If you look at the job that are open, the job availability, and uh, to your point, Mayor Williams. The highest paying jobs typically are in technology, and we're not creating that. So it's kind of thinking outside the box, not just looking at our high schools to provide it, but working with our colleges, also working with our current workforce in our businesses. Uh, Jim McKelvey, I don't know if every, anyone has uh, gotten to, to meet him yet. He's out of St. Louis and was at one of our U.S. Conference of Mayors and has a phenomenal company called Launch Code. And that is taking people who are literally, there was a woman who was a bus driver. And they take them through an online training and then a, a shadow program with other businesses. A hundred percent of the companies that he ha contacted and asked, can I have this person train with you? Took him up on his offer. A hundred percent of those trained were hired. Those are the types of things that we need to look at, not just what we're currently doing, but also what other areas are doing. Because I want to be able to compete in technology and I want to make sure that we are not losing jobs to California. And Mayor Rawlings, I'll start with you on this one. And this is a good segue from the last question, but each of your cities is home to independent school districts. So how do you perceive the role of the mayor and the council of working with the school districts to encourage the growth of a skilled workforce? Well, I think the first thing we as mayors have got to do is realize that it's our job, okay? It may not be part of our uh, define jurisdiction, but it is our job. If we love our cities and we love our people in the cities, education is the fundamental uh, foundation of that. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's got to be the mindset. Um, second, I think you've got to define what your role is. And to me, it is the advocate for families, the advocate for those kids. The reason this issue of workforce development is so critical is we are seeing greater and greater gaps between the haves and the have nots that are out there. And um, it is an education gap. It is a expectation gap. Um, it's uh, so many gaps and it all starts around the schoolhouse. And so what we have to do is speak the truth to other elected officials. Um, I'm a believer in advocating carefully in political situations for the right uh, candidates and making sure that everybody realizes the burning platform that we're on because we're not doing a good job. We are just not. One out of 10, uh, I'm just speak about Dallas, but I bet it's similar. One out of 10 kids graduating not going to school, graduating are ready for college, according to SAT and ACT. That, not that they have to go, to Betsy's point, but they need to know the math, they need to know those things to be able to do it. And, and, and so we've got, we've got to change this system in a markedly uh, different direction. And, and you've got to have someone from the outside you know, uh, screaming the house is on fire, I think, for people to, to get it inside. So that's what I think our role is. He's, got, think, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. He's got a very altruistic um, reason for what you do. Mine is much more pragmatic. When I hear businesses aren't coming to my cities because the schools, I look at that as economic development loss. And so I want to do everything that I can to make sure that our school districts are the strongest and that the perception 
of our school districts are very strong. So that when we have CEOs and other business leaders bring their employees here, they want to live in my city as well as work in my city. Um, and I also think that the cities, while we don't have the access to um, the school taxes, so we don't have the ability to directly change or directly direct, we do have the influence. But I think a lot of it also has to do with our planning and zoning and how we create different areas around the city for housing. And is it balanced? Do you have multifamily here? Do you have single family here? Are you maintaining the neighborhoods? And you have to make sure that you're also working all the time with your ISDs. We've got a great relationship. I can call anybody up at my school board, tell them about a project that I want, a program that I want, what's coming up on council, and we'll have that honest feedback. But we also need to make sure that staffs are talking so that if you're putting in a high density area, you need to make sure that you've got the schools that have room for those kids. It's when we start overpacking our schools that I think we're really starting to see some problems. And I'll agree with both of them, and I'll go you one further, Mike, than just the mayor's involvement. I think it's our job to also involve our business community. I think for years, as a mother of three and a grandmother of three, and having been a PTA mom as well as a business person, I've served on site-based management teams at five different schools and for 25 or 30 years. I think the last 30 years, parents and businesses have kind of abdicated education to the schools. It's time now that we were there. I can't tell you how fundamental it is and how much the kids love it when a businessman or a businesswoman in a suit who looks successful comes to school and shakes hands with them, comes to school and says hello. It's the little things. It's not an easy answer. There's no single fix to it. But we've got to, as a community or in communities, take ownership of it again and get back out there. We just created the mayor's Education Advisory Council, and we've had one loose meeting getting going, and my staff is doing a lot of interviews, and the hope is many of you in this room are involved in education already, that we can pull what you're doing together and find a few single things that really impact the kids, starting at early childhood and heading up through high school. There are great things going on in our schools, our gold schools, schools of choice. We need to expand those programs. We need to they need more input from you as a business com community, and we need to know what's really out there. But corporate champions are really important to kids who don't see a father or a mother going to work, who don't see them being very successful. And being those role models as good corporate citizens is critical, I think. Well, mayors don't run schools, but they sure can help a whole lot, can't they? And I think that is so important that we communicate. Uh, I'm very excited about our council communicating with our school boards. We have several independent school districts there in our city. And I believe it's very important that we know the goals of each other and that we align our goals together so that we can do the mo have the most impact. I think that's something that is missed so many times in communities, that you don't know the other's goals, you haven't gotten them aligned, and then, of course, we all know, too, that partnerships are so critical. Educational partnerships between the community and the school district and the business community and our community leaders are critical. Leveraging each other's resources are so important. Right now, our Arlington Independent School District is building a career and training facility. It is very exciting uh, there because we're getting back to that mid-skills level training something we had been doing and gotten away from. And right now it is an opportunity for our city, our business community, our other community leaders to help. Uh, in fact, many are going to be involved in doing mentoring and providing internships, providing financial resources here to help on that. And then even you go back, that was a community partnership in which the goal of our entire community was to pass a $660 million school bond election. And y'all, that's not easy. That's a lot of money. But we had neglected doing a lot of things and put it off. And it was, however, a whole community came together and said we recognized the need, and we had an overwhelming landslide approval of that bond election that was the largest ever passed for a school in Tarrant County. 
And then going beyond that, another program that I think fits the, the theme of today was, uh, is being done between the AISD and, T and Tarrant County College. And it's the early high school college, Arlington Collegiate High School. Right now, they have 200 students that are there and they have uh, had applications from kids who would normally not be going to college at all. And yet, they can go to this early high school college and in four years receive a high school diploma and an associate's degree and be ready to go right into the workforce. And here are kids that perhaps would never even make it through high school, much less go to junior college. It is a great example of many things. And I think the collaboration, I'm sure that each one of the mayors here have, have things in their city that we can share together. And I'm looking forward. I'm the rookie mayor in this bunch. I'm learning. And I'm looking forward to learning from each one of your cities on how we can help this and how we can move forward because it is so important uh, here as we move forward because education is the foundation of any successful community, isn't it, Mayor Rawlings? I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. I really like the discussion that got s was started regarding the, the business leaders and the community's involvement. And that was really my next question, and I'm directed, if, if you have anything to add, Mayor Van Dyne, about what bis how business leaders can be more involved. Um, when I first got elected, I didn't think that we were using our business leaders. Um, we used them with the chamber, but we really didn't have a direct uh, relationship with the city. Um, so I created the Mayor's Economic Development Council. We have a lot of large companies in our city, and we all get together every quarter. Um, they get to meet each other and talk about what we're doing. But I really wanted to be able to reach out to any CEO in our area and say, look, we've got this business opportunity. I need your help in catching it. When people come to talk to us, it's great to meet the mayor, it's great to meet the city council, the chamber people, but who these CEOs want to talk to is another CEO. What's the workforce like? What's the school, what, what are the schools like? What are the housing, you know, housing options? And it was interesting because I, the first meeting that we had with this group, I looked around and I said, this is our group. Um, I need to know what you want me to do. Uh, this is not me dictating or just a presentation. So we went around the room. The number one topic out of everybody who was there was education. And they were willing but just had not been asked to get involved. And where we've taken that is we had all, we have three ISDs in Irving, and we had all three of our uh, superintendents come in. We have a number of private schools. We had them come in, and they talked about the programs that their schools offer. They talked about where they need help. And the people who were in the, me in the meeting, it was great because the CEOs, the large majority of them worked in Irving, but they didn't live there. And the reason why was because of the perception of our school district. And after that, they were like, wow. So what they, what they suggested that we do is have our, their HR president, you know, their VPs of their HR departments come and meet with our school districts. And what we found was just kind of breaking it down and getting that relationship started was really important. But then we found out that the more that they felt that they were part of the education system in our city, the more involved they got. So they actually started adopting schools. And we have like, for example, NCH that goes into our schools and they have two days a year where they have 50 plus employees that go in and on a regular basis they read to the kids, they do projects for the students. And it's amazing, Microsoft has their second largest um, uh, uh, area outside of California in Irving, and they have adopted a school, and they created a tech uh, uh, program in one of our schools, and it's phenomenal. But I think the worst part of is a resource that's untapped when we don't ask. So you can always meet with a mayor, but mayors, we need to have an ask when we go in. We have to have it thoroughly thought out because I have yet to be told no. Yeah, I, I, I want to uh, the, the add something. The strategic insight that I got is that kids get educated most of the time outside of school. And so we think about our public school system as the end all and be all. But think about what those kids are doing this summer. Think about what they're doing after school. Think about uh, all the time they have, excuse me, those pre-K, there's no school for pre-Ks, 
okay? So think about the, all their life, and the business community can be terrifically involved in that. And so I think you're exactly right about having the ask. And it's our job to put a package together that they can easily get involved in. We've got the Mayor's Intern Fellows Program where uh, high school kids can work in companies. We've got the Mayor's Summer Reading Program where they are providing gifts if the kids read enough. We've got the City of Learning Program where they can virtually learn throughout the summer. We've got um, uh, the Mayor's Back to School Program so they're for poor kids, they can get school packs and be ready. So if, we, if you put a package together, I love Habitat Humanity because it's so easy. I can go to for a day, help build a house, leave, and feel like I did something and it actually did something, okay? We've got to make it easier for the business community to get engaged as opposed to just do good, work harder. Along the same line, <clears throat> in our city, we don't have that many businesses involved in it, although we do have some. Uh, we look to our faith-based organizations. Our faith-based organizations are huge in being involved in the school district, and that gives more than just education. They're, they're not preaching to them, but they're preaching to them, and they're showing them something. You need, you need that African-American. You need that Hispanic. You need people that they recognize and they look at and they can look up to you to know that there's a future. And I think we're all heading that way, and our faith-based organizations are a great add to that, and they look at it from that direction, and that's the way they approach it. And the faith-based groups are great on summer <laughs> programs, and I think summer is so often, these kids spend, an educator told me recently, 80% of their time is not in school. And that's staggering. It's 80%. So you think about their summers, their before schools, and their out of school, or after school time. Fort Worth runs a lot of community center programs, and we've had a community challenge going on. And I've been going the last month to see the kids, and you know I've learned to do the wobble with them and the Berlin <laughs> shuffle, and we've played tag. And I'll tell you, they're all a lot faster than me. But they do love you coming, and I think that's often, there's a lot of learning goes on in those out-of-school programs, a lot, and it has to. A lot of tutoring, a lot of caring for the kids, finding out if they're ready to go back to school so that they haven't lost everything and aren't starting over again. And I think as community leaders, it's imperative that we recognize that piece of it as well as being champions during the school year. I just want to echo, uh, once again, Pre-K, pre-K, it's a big issue for uh, America, for Texas, for our cities. I just want to put it on everybody's uh, front yeah, and center on that. Nancy okay. Scott, if you haven't seen it, the Miles Foundation, and Grant and them may be here, have just produced a new video on early childhood education and how much of a child's brain and learning abilities are shaped before they're even five years old. So Google it and see it, it's a great video. Well, going along with the theme of this discussion, uh, we have a businessman there in our community that uh, has really set an incredible example there. He, he works in Mission Arlington. He does church in one of the toughest apartment complexes there, but he recognized the same problem that these kids are going to school and then they have all this time on their hands and nobody to guide them to do the right thing, to set the example, or to help them with their homework, no access to computers. Well, he now is going around to apartment complexes and asking them to donate to apartments that they will gut them. Arlington Independent School District is volunteered to man those from 3 to 10 so that they have a computer lab uh, there and mentors for them to work in. You know, it's a, it's a start. It, it's a beginning. And then an, another thing that I think is kind of a little pieces, isn't it? Little pieces. And then another thing I think that's kind of a fun thing that's evolved into a very big thing in our community is that our business leaders through the Chamber of Commerce uh, partner with AISD, UTA, TCC, and then a whole lot of business partners to create a program called What's the Big Idea? Well, in our school district, uh, the teachers adopt a curriculum to get our kids thinking about what is a big idea that we need to do to help improve our community? And they work all year on it. 
third grade through eighth grade, and they submit their entries there in the spring, and our business and community leaders go through thousands of those, and they pick 600 of them that are semifinalists, and they are all recognized on Entrepreneur Day, and uh, our and we have an awards program that's held at UTA, and literally thousands show up for it. And these big ideas are pretty interesting. And then the top 10 actually get college scholarships to go to University of Texas at Arlington. Can you imagine that at third grade getting a college scholarship? That's not bad, huh? <laughs> but uh, look, to give you an example, though, of some of the big ideas, uh, this one stuck out and especially very appropriate today with the other mayors here. But a sixth grader presented his big idea, and it was, a, it was a winner, all right. He said that we need to put a sensor on the front of every General Motors car that comes out, and that sensor would locate the potholes in the street and move your car away from it. I think that's a great idea. That's a great well, idea. It, wait just a minute. Before you like that, it gets better. These sensors would also locate them GPS coordinates and send them directly to the mayor to get them repaired. <laughs> Maybe to pretty good up. thinking, huh? Pretty good. I, th thinking. I think we need to send all those to the mayor of Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great discussion. Shall we all vote to stay here all afternoon? This is. <laughs> but since we are time sensitive, I have one more question, uh, and I'll start with Mayor Williams. And first of all, I'll say there's so many success stories in DFW lately. Um, companies head, moving their headquarters here, expanding the GM expansion, Facebook coming to Fort Worth, it's so exciting. Tell us about successful economic development efforts in your city and why you believe a proactive and aggressive city recruitment efforts matter and what else it would be doing in this competitive market. Well, obvious obviously for me it's very much on my mind about taking care of the businesses that you have in your city you know I think our GM expansion is an example of that of how they had seen how Arlington had treated them how we were going to in the future and they made that investment there in our community along with a great trained workforce which is what we're talking about right now but uh, you know in our uh, area right now North Texas it is exploding and every time I travel to a convention, I, I'm an engineer, and I go to a lot of conventions, ICSC, ULI, everyone is talking about North Texas. And it is exciting, but we need to take advantage of that. And time is of the essence for us to continue to go. And yes, being aggressive and, and proactive is so important because as a city, we need to identify what are the businesses that fit in our community? Which are the ones that we would like to have, but perhaps just as important, what are the assets that we have in our community that other businesses would value? For us, of course, our location. There at the center of the Metroplex with downtown Dallas on one end and downtown Fort Worth on the other and the International Airport. What are those businesses? Let's not forget that, Irving and North Richland Hills, squish in the middle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ir Irving and North Richland Hills are there, aren't Thank they? Way much. to go, Mayor. <laughs> and so that location is so important for us. So what are the businesses that would value that? What are businesses that may value being next to the University of Texas at Arlington, an emerging research university? You know, uh, we need to find those businesses, and then you take your community partners together to tout the, uh, the assets that you have and to bring them in because it is so important now. Let me share something else with you that I think is very important and it's been hit on. Um, here at the local level, we have such an important uh, responsibility to make a difference. And I'm very appreciative of our state elected officials and our federal elected officials because they work very hard, but yet it starts with us. You know, we are charged with that, with creating jobs, with job training, and, and bringing jobs into, into our communities. James Clifton, the president of Gallup uh, Corporation, wrote a very interesting book called The Coming Jobs Wars. And in fact, the thing he said is that mayors and university presidents and local leaders all need to come together here to help 
our people to be trained and to create the jobs as we move forward. You know, if it, uh, when we look back on the invention of Internet, it totally changed everything, didn't it? Technology is continuing to change as we move forward. We've got to be adaptable. We've got to move forward uh, here because it is a jobs war. And, and the significance, I keep coming back to it because we have talked about it so much, but the manufacturing jobs that were created uh, here at, at, at General Motors, and they are in other cities too, are so critical because we need to continue and take our place back as a manufacturing giant here in the world itself. But a lot of responsibility on each of us, and I think we're ready to take it uh, there. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenges and being uh, aggressive and proactive is the name of the game in economic development. And I think one of the big things, I mean, I could talk all day about the successes that Fort Worth has had just in the last couple of weeks. It'll be our biggest July ever. But I think one of the critical things that Mike and I and many of you have worked on, too, is the regional effort. The fact that this is the fourth largest metropolitan region in the nation, not far behind Chicagoland, as Mike says. We, you know, Mike's got a phrase, and you, he says this is one big city with two personalities. And I said, well, it's got multiple personalities, more than two. We're kind of split. But really, what's good for one of us is good for the others. Because people today don't see borders. And I think our biggest challenge we're continuing to grow. We're continuing to do great things. We're getting better and better at all of us working together for the benefit of each other. But the thing that has to be done is we've got to continue to focus on transportation. If we don't, transportation as a region is going to kill us. High-speed rail should be a distinct possibility or a distinct probability, preferably. And if we all get behind those and the right light rail, the T will be at the airport soon, connect to the orange rail, that's going to make us just better and better. I'm going to continue to promote Fort Worth, but I'm also going to continue to promote this region because I think it's what's going to help us all continue to grow, get a better handle on education and a better handle on economic development. I'm, I'm going to talk, Deborah, I agree with everything that you guys have said. Um, I'm going to talk about it from a political standpoint. I think, quite honestly, we need to grow up from a political standpoint. I love working with these mayors. Um, Jeff, I just got to meet you, but your predecessor, Robert Cluck, was fantastic. I really look forward to working with you. I've known Betsy since I was elected mayor. I got to meet Mike when I was elected mayor. Oscar, we've known each other for 12, 12 years now. And it's really, really important that we compete. I mean, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. We compete. But we also realize that in order for us to have a strong region, we have to work together. It does not help any of us to come up here and say for, you know, bad things about Fort Worth or bad things about Dallas or Arlington. It just doesn't make any sense. So internally, it's almost like a house, right? You can fight with your siblings when you're home, but when you go back out, you had better be sticking up for them. And when I go to New York, when I go to L.A., I mean, I do talk about the DFW region. Love to have you come to Irving, but hey, is there anybody out here who's not getting benefit from Toyota moving to Plano? I mean, that is a good thing for all of us, and we need to keep that up. It's great, and again, you know, you asked what the big thing was, the best thing about being mayor, and it's the relationships. I would say at the state and federal level, we need to get back to that. We can only do so much, and we can do a lot, but we really need to work on, on other areas. But I would say absolutely. Um, and it's a great thing that as a region, we're working so strongly together. And Betsy, thank you for having us here today. Thank you all for coming. This thank you. The only, I'll just add one word to it, and that is, it, by the way, you got it, work together. I think this is, we've, we've heard this, and, and it's something we believe in. Let's think outside the borders of the United States, okay? Our business is going to be offshore, okay? And so, you know, we've got to get our region up in the saliency of uh, business decision makers in Berlin and Shanghai and uh, Abu Dhabi. We've, we've got to. So international, international, international. I'll shut up. Well, this has been a rich and wonderful conversation. And in light of our time constraints, I don't think we have time for questions from the audience. Since our, our topic was competitive and effective workforce, we got to get you all back to work. So thank you, esteemed mayors. 
you inspire thank you. us, and thank you for all that you do for our city. Thank you.